Republicans continue to pressure Senate Democrats to take up the Lakin Riley Act, named for the Georgia nursing student who was allegedly murdered by an illegal immigrant who had previously been arrested for shoplifting and then released. The legislation would require immigration authorities to detain illegal migrants who are arrested for crimes like burglary and theft. Now, the bill passed the House with bipartisan support in March and now sits untouched in the Senate. Joining us now is a co-sponsor of that measure, North Carolina Republican Senator Ted Budd. Senator, welcome. Great to be with you, Chris. Okay, now you and your fellow Republicans are pushing hard on the Democratic majority to bring this legislation up for a vote. Uh, what's the status? Does this most recent case improve your chances of getting a vote on this? Well, it's not just the Lake and Riley Act. It's also the Police Act. It's H.R. 2, which has been around 13 months sitting there idle in the Senate. I mean, we're waiting on Schumer to allow these. And if we try to pass them by unanimous consent, they send somebody, usually it's Chris Murphy down there, that says these are bad ideas, particularly in regards to the Police Act. But look, we think if you harm a police officer or a first responder, then you should be deported yes, if you're exactly. here illegally. If you're talking about uh, the Lake and Riley Act, if you commit a minor crime yeah. and you're here illegally, we think that you should be detained because in the case of Lake and Riley, this is, this is a person that committed multiple crimes uh, before they uh, tragically killed Lake and Riley. This could have been prevented had Joe Biden taken illegal immigration. We're not talking about legal immigration. We've got to separate the two. This is about illegal immigration and stopping the chaos and securing the border. Okay, but in this case, to be clear, the Lake and Riley Act wouldn't have applied to this suspect in New York, who, as I understand it, hadn't been arrested or charged with a crime uh, that would have would have fallen under the bill. This is a guy who was supposed to leave the country. He had been through the process. Uh, is that right? Do I have that right? Uh, hey, look, there's so many different things you can get at. All these all these are unique cases, but you get at them through different ways. You get at them through stopping the chaos, securing the border. Going back to uh, HR2, which is a comprehensive package that would have dealt with this. Look, all these things could have been solved. We wouldn't have had 10 million people here illegally had we secured the border, had Joe Biden not undone by 93 executive actions of things that President Trump had done to secure our border. Look, this used to be somebody else's problem. It's, I was just listening to the discussion before. This seemed like it was always somebody else's problem until it wasn't. It, I hear sheriffs all across North Carolina, 100 counties. Uh, right next door there to Mick Mulvaney. And it, it, it says, the sheriffs are coming up to me and saying every county in North Carolina is now a border county because of Joe Biden's policies. This was always somewhere else. It was a Texas or New Mexico, Arizona, California problem, but no longer. It's right here in North Carolina. And now we're seeing it even in parks in New York that were fairly suburban, uh, that okay, were well, ground ridden places. We have seen a decrease in uh, border apprehensions in recent days. Do you give any credit? to President Biden and his executive action. Is that working? Now, look, this comes in waves. There's a lag effect. Um, just you have to look at the trend line. And we've got 10 million people people here illegally. I mean, are there some that came that, that aren't harmful? Probably sure. But they came here illegally. And it really sets a very bad precedent. And we're seeing that play out in these horrific crimes. Look, this is a great country. Can you blame people for wanting to be here? People vote with their feet. But you can't have these horrible incentives that Joe Biden has set up over the last three and a half years which has led to the chaos that we're seeing. And people are scared to death because one, it used to be somebody else's problem, and now it's our problem. OK, before I let you go, I got to talk a little Washington stuff. Uh, in the future of the Republican Senate conference, uh, Mitch McConnell is preparing to step down as your party's leader in the Senate. Uh, question for you, Rick Scott, John Cornyn, John Thune, do you have a favorite? Where are you going to be on this? Talk to me, Chris, on November 6th. Uh, of course, <laughs> the with everybody here, it's a collegial body, but let's have a conversation on the morning of November 6th. All right. We'll, we'll, put, we'll put you down. We'll put you, we'll mark you down. We'll call you back, Senator. We thank you very oh, much for that. your time today. Talk, talk to you, you soon.